Hi, it's Presley, and today I'm going to be talking about how to stay positive while waiting for top surgery. I thought, since I haven't had top surgery, obviously, I would just talk to you about how to stay positive while waiting for surgery, because I, I don't have the gift of hindsight when it comes to pre-op care, and I don't have the, the gift of future sight when it comes to post-op care. So I thought I would just talk a little bit about how I personally stay positive when it comes to the waiting thing. Because after all, staying positive is a way to take care of yourself. So sometimes it's kind of hard to stay positive. It's not something that you just decide to do. It's something that I think actually takes practice. Um, and it's not something that you have to, you know, be good enough or strong enough to be able to do. I think it's actually just something that you learn. Like, it's, it's kind of a tactic, I think. And I feel like I've taken a lot of time to learn, and it's taken a lot of, a lot of time and a lot of fucking up for me to realize how to best um, stay positive for me. I don't think everyone, like, kind of mentally deals with it the same way, but... Anyway, and also when I say stay positive, I don't mean, you know, to, to think about things optimistically all the time and to never feel down and never feel sad. I mean more like how to stay, like, like staying motivated, staying, um, not getting yourself down too much, um, you know, just how to carry yourself forwards when, when things are hard. I've basically had a lot of struggle with staying Staying positive, staying determined, staying motivated, carrying myself forwards when things are hard or when I'm feeling down. I've struggled a lot with that. And I've gotten, it hasn't gotten easy, but it's gotten easier, significantly easier lately. And I think partly it has to do with me discovering and coming out as trans, but I also think it has to do with the fact that it actually takes practice. And I just recently learned, like I had fucked up so many times, I was like, I gotta stop. This has to, like, I have to get my shit together. And somehow I got my shit together, but it takes time and I don't want anyone to feel bad because they haven't gotten there yet. It doesn't mean that you're bad, it doesn't mean that you're useless, it doesn't mean that you're never gonna get there. It's just, it's like anything else, it's like drawing or playing music or, or exercising or whatever, you know, you get better with time, with practice. You just gotta keep trying and keep fighting until you get there. So I thought I'd basically just share a few things that I like to do when I feel really like kind of dysphoric and sad and down and unmotivated and, and really not, like, I'm struggling with staying positive. One thing that I really like to do is to listen to music. I actually have a playlist on Spotify that uh, that's like specifically designed for when I'm feeling dysphoric and frustrated and sad that I listen to to make myself feel better. And I put it together on Tumblr um, and I'll put a link to it in the description. For me personally, I'm just talking about me personally here, but it might help someone else too. But for me personally, I feel like I'm very easily affected by music and I often use it to like guide my mood, sort of. And it really helps me a lot. So I do use music as a sort of emotional tool to guide my mood to where I need it to be. So yeah, I'll put a link in the description to the playlist and you can listen to it if you want to. The playlist is like basically designed to be validating for trans people and I guess specifically trans guys, but for all trans people. Um, so listen to it if you want to. And I also think it's really important to find a balance between um, living in the present and focusing on the future. Did I fuck up my hair? Because a lot of people say like, live in the now, live in the now, the present moment. And it's like, yeah, that's totally legit. But when your present sucks or you're not happy with your current situation, living solely in the present is not going to, it's not, it's not going to do a lot for you. On the other hand, if you only focus on the future and you only think about that, then you're not, you're not centered in the present enough to actually, like, what are you going to do then in the present to make you get closer to that future that you want? So what I like to do is when I feel um, frustrated, and sad and dysphoric and whatever. Like basically whenever I'm frustrated with my present, I think to myself, what can I do now to get closer to the future that I want? For example, if I wake up and I feel really dysphoric and sad, what I can do that day to get myself closer to, to surgery is to go to work and because each day's worth of money is one step closer to getting surgery. Basically just trying to find a balance between that and just always think whenever you're unhappy with your present, like what can I do now to, to make myself get closer to the future that I want? And that can be, that can literally be like researching top surgery. 
like reading about it and watching videos like this and um, just learning a lot about it because you're gonna put that knowledge to use in the future. So basically it doesn't have to be that you go out and do something. It can just be something really simple. It can be it can be doing a couple of doing a couple of push-ups because you wanna work out your chest muscles a little because that's good to do before surgery. You know, it's really important to stay rooted in the present moment and to appreciate the things that you have. God, I'm sweating. It's so warm. Um, summer finally came to Sweden and I'm not used to it. <laughs> but, but that's besides the point. So yeah, just like find a balance between focusing on the future and living in the present moment is something that I think is, is extremely important when it comes to trying to get where you want to get and when it comes to staying positive about something that you have to wait for. And finally, distractions. Distractions are actually really good. You shouldn't do them only because you cannot keep running away from your problems all the time and just ignore whenever you're feeling bad. That's not good. When I say distractions, I guess what I'm meaning is just live your life. Don't let the waiting consume you and don't... I know a lot of us feel like we're just waiting for our lives to begin and I definitely feel like that in a way. There are so many things that I would like to do and so I feel like I would be so much freer, uh, obviously I would, if I'd had top surgery and, and, and if, I, if I were on testosterone and stuff like that. But the thing is, your life has already started and so is mine. So like, go to a concert, go to a convention, go out with your friends, go to a bar, have a drink, you know, cook a good meal, watch a movie, write a story, do something, do things, because that I think will not, not just to momentarily make you stop thinking about the dysphoria, the frustration of waiting, but because afterwards, even when you're feeling dysphoric and frustrated and everything like that, you you won't have that, that, that consuming feeling that your life hasn't started and that you're just waiting for your life to begin. So if you can, if your dysphoria is not completely overbearing, Please do, like, do things. Do things that you want to do and don't wait. Time is ticking. I don't mean to stress you out, but your life is already going. It's already started and it sucks that it's not the way that you want it to be right now, but it's still going and you can just make the best of it. Like, don't ignore the fact that it's frustrating that you have to wait. But you don't have to stay optimistic all the time. But you can still stay motivated and positive and determined because you know that what you want is coming for you in the future. And if you can't have surgery, well, what's, what's coming for you in the future is a more accepting world, because we are getting there. Motivational speech. Yeah, so I hope you found, found these tips helpful in some way. Yeah, my dog is snoring. My dog is here. I have to show you my dog, oh my God. Look at my tiny, he got up. You got up, let me focus on you. Let me focus on you. This is saffron or saffron. It means saffron in Swedish. I don't have him all the time because he has he has like two homes. But this is him staring into the distance. He's old and generally doesn't give a fuck about things. Can you give me a high five? High five. High five. High five. That is not a high five. High five. High five. Come on. High five. High five. High five. Yes. Thank you. I just talked about how to stay like motivated and like you're not very motivated are you? Boop. Yeah. Um have a lovely amazing day and love yourself. Stay motivated. Um I love you and I'm going to give you a hug and bye. Hugs. Bye.